we have a lot of smart black people, but um, we're not decision makers. We're not making bukus of money. You know, I've been to so many different meetings in which I, I, I hear million dollar projects going on. I'm like, yay, yay, yay. And, and then I realized that it's not for me. You know, it's, it's um, I may come to the grand opening or I may be invited to an after party, but the actual planning is it, not, um, not made for me. My name is Sheree Stevens. I am the executive director of the Georgia Wellness and Fitness Festival. We work really hard to get people healthy through making Middle Georgia and also throughout the state. And I'm really active in the community because I was born here in Macon. I love Macon. And when I see a problem, even if it's not a, a paid gig, I like to try to do my best to, to be a part of the solution. And I'm Scott Mitchell. I own Travis Jean Emporium downtown, and I'm also the president of the Downtown Making Community Association, and I'm on several boards downtown. I like to try to make downtown as diverse as possible and to showcase just how much it has to offer to all people. We have a few questions to, to talk about. You want to pick up the first one and see what it says? All right, Cherise, how do you define racism? Mm. That's a good question. <clears throat> it's so complex. So, you know, racism for my grandmother's generation and me are, are different, but still um, hurtful. Um, when, in my grandmother's years, it was more in your face, like you couldn't drink from this water fountain, you couldn't go to certain spaces. And racism for me in this modern day is I go to a meeting and I try to present information and then I may not get the contract because it's a, you know, boys club and you know, I'm not part of the inner crew. Um, so racism to me is, is a struggle every day. It's a struggle from people judging you just because your melon is a little bit darker and being scared of you. Um, not trusting you to do projects that you have the capability to do. Um, it's about you dating. You know, I, I, you know, I like to date out of my race sometimes, but you know, <laughs> that may be too much. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, people thinking not the best of you because you're just a little bit darker. So, it's just a struggle for me, a lot, and to stay positive. You know, what about you? Well, for me, um, I have seen racism my entire life. Um, I grew up in a um, family unit where my grandparents were extremely racist on my dad's side. Um, my dad's dad was in the Klan, um, and so were his, some of his brothers. Um, I was lucky that my father moved us away from that, and um, so I was able to have a different experience than I could have had. Um, but I still knew that it was there in my family. Um, because of that, I've always really strived to break that cycle. And that's not always been easy. Um, I was gay and they hated gay people, you know, and um, they hated Jewish people and anyone that wasn't exactly like them. And um, so there was so much hatred. I caught myself in high school. Um, when you uh, grow up with the N-word being the very common word, I mean very common, um, and, I, I, and I, I would catch myself. I remember in high school writing something, and still to this day, I regret the way it came out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and um, I remember um, making fun of someone who was Caucasian who was dating a black person. And so when I went away to college and found that I could talk about that, um, I think one of the most freeing things is when I learned I could talk about that with a black person um, and they don't immediately judge me and hate me because I come from a family that, that did. Um, that's a very freeing experience, yeah. you know? You were talking about generational and how your generation is different from your grandmother's. Um, mine has also changed because um, 
there are probably many members of my family who don't exactly believe and think like I do that they also have come a long way. So, um, I mean, last year when my almost entire family attended my wedding, um, that's a huge step, you know, in the right direction. Um, I'm able to talk with them openly and honestly about my life now when I wasn't at one time. Um, have we ever broached topics of racism? No. And maybe that's something I should do. You want to go to the next question? Yes. We, we, um, Even though the first question yeah. I kind of cried a little bit, we, but it's okay. Uh, we mixed them up, though. That's okay. the next one. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> Ooh, that's a good one. How do you define privilege? Privilege is when you have over an abundance, and most people don't even realize they do. Um, when I ride down Houston Avenue, going out toward, um, let's say, Bruce Elementary, and I look around and I see that the kids that live out that way, there's no Wendy's, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A. There are no restaurants. There's abandoned houses, a lot of blight. Um, there is a store that says grocery on it, and you go inside and things are four times what they cost at the Kroger over beside me. Um, that's privilege. Um, that's when I really see how privileged I am. Yeah, and then privilege to me is just be able to go through your day with some dignity. So until I was in my 30s, I didn't even carry a purse when I went into a store because I always got followed. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was a young mom and moms used to have like diaper bags and things like that. I would never even carry a diaper bag. And of course I had small kids at the time because you always get stopped. Um, you know, ask if, you know, what's going on, not because they want to help you, but because they think you're stealing. Um, even with my son, he, um, at the time he was a student at Mountain Sales. It was a big deal. You get a car when you turn 16. And during that first two weeks of him having a car, he got stopped three times. And uh, he didn't want to drive for, for three months after that because he was so scarred. So privilege to me is able to do everyday activities at leisure. You know, you don't have a care in the world. Privilege to me is, is something I wish I had sometimes. My life is harder than it needs to be. And even when people were teaching their kids about driving safely, I was teaching my son how to act if he got pulled over. So, um, hmm. you, you ever been stopped? No, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Have I ever been stopped? Oh, yes. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, if you say you never been stopped, I'm like, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was a pretty wild uh, kid, yeah. Okay. So, yes, I have been stopped. Okay. Yes. Let's see. So, what would make this a better place to live? Just giving people a chance, you know. People are not all that different. Yeah, we do have some different life experiences. I mean, I can tell you things that would probably just make you be like, what? And you still smile, you still, you know, enjoy life. Um, but generally, we're all the same. We want a happy family. You know, we want a baby to support ourselves, a good income. You know, we all pretty much want the same thing. It's just, when racism and egos and misunderstanding and using a privilege to, you know, put another person down, it, um, it, it takes away from that. I think when we can talk and we can have conversations, that breaks down those walls and we start building bridges. And, um, and I think in this climate that we're in today, that is so important. I think another thing too is people locally that spend their energy thinking about things on the national stage, you know, you can really make a difference here. Um, and that's truly where you're going to make a difference. But it has to start here. Don't you think so? I think so. You know, I'm going to stop being jaded and, and continue to be as positive, but it's people like you to kind of help me in that process. So I appreciate you. And just know I don't consider you as jaded. I've never thought of that. You know, I mean, so you may think that of yourself, but I've never thought that. Um, 
Open and caring. That's what you Well, mean. you know when I say I need a hug? Uh-huh. Those one of the little things. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> days uh, when I say I need a yes. hug, that's like, I'm like, ugh. Uh, yes. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. I appreciate you. <laughs>